Next up on Clandestine Live E-Tech, Eric Mims of Mims Motors. Eric Mims of Mims Motors again here on Clandestine Live. I'm so honored, Eric. I'm so honored. And, and as a human being, man, I've been blessed to meet you, to embrace your thought process. So Eric Mims, Mims Motors, we're sharing this vision. I'm going to be able to sit in your vehicle and drive it. Indeed, indeed. Uh, the company is na actually named after my father, Matthew Mims, mm -hmm. and uh, I decided that I wanted to be a car manufacturer when I was nine years old, uh, when my fr my brother actually ended up buying his first car at uh, Burt Greenwald Chevrolet in Akron, Ohio. And uh, everybody asked me what I wanted to, what kind of car I wanted to drive and or, or own in the, in the future, and I told them that I wanted my own. And uh, they all kind of like looked at me kind of crazy and said, you know, well, once you, you know, buy a car and you own it, you know, you paid it off, it's going to be yours. And I said, no, I want to own my own car company. Mm -hmm. And uh, so everybody kind of like looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, what's this nine year old kid talking about, you know? And um, but nine, uh, 41 years later now, uh, Mims Motors Corporation, I'm the first black car manufacturer in 100 years since C.R. Patterson and Sons. Uh, we're a certified uh, SAE large scale manufacturer of electric vehicles. Uh, we've got 27 vehicles that we'll be coming out with over the next 10 to 15 years and uh, we will be launching this year uh, in 2020 and uh, unfortunately my father was not here to see it my dad died last year he got a chance to see our first uh, vehicle the E7 uh, at the house in Akron Ohio we actually end up taking that vehicle back home he got a chance to see it and uh, he was really proud he knew that I would get it done and um, you know the company's named after my father so it's in his honor that we do this and uh, we're gonna change the world you know what I mean? It's a saltwater-based battery system, uh, designed a four-phase electromagnetic generator motor system, uh, highly efficient, uh, frictionless magnetic motor system generators. So uh, as we were talking about last night, it's a uh, more so based toward the, the frequencies of the planet uh, so that when you drive our cars, you're going to have that nice, you know, calm feeling. Uh, we worked on the uh, noise vibration harshness, especially in the premium vehicles, so that when you get out of the car, you're going to feel like you've just went to a spa you know so that's just one of those extras that come out of it a thousand mile range recharge in five minutes via wi-fi system that we design and uh, even when you go into the charging stations five minute recharge and uh you know we're going to do the best we can to give everybody the best service possible you know so it's not just about me it's about the cons uh, consumer. It's about the planet. Uh, utilizing salt water as an electrolyte when the vehicle is done and we remove that electrolyte out, you get clean potable water and uh, it doesn't pollute. We don't have to worry about any type of fires or anything like that. It's, uh, it's non-flammable, you know, so it's uh, something that's really designed to uh, be recyclable from, you know, the bottom up. So we're really excited about the opportunity and really excited about being here to talk to you guys about it. Well, man, I, uh, that was a download, Eric. <laughs> Something else, man. I, this is Eric Mims, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, on Clandestine Live. I, you just heard this. So let's repeat some of this. You just said water. Yes, salt water. Y you just said Wi-Fi recharge. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, let me rewind a little bit. Okay, you also said, give me the range. 1,000 miles, recharge in five minutes. Recharge in five minutes, 1,000 miles. Man, you know, uh, I'm always singing on the road again. <laughs> I'm always thinking about driving, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about driving, and uh, I'm pretty keen to that Wi-Fi thing. I, uh, I can't even comprehend it. So the thought process is I'm going to be in this MIMS Motors. I'm going to be in a G7 or, or a cool name, right? Some, E7, some E7. E7. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, see, I totally, you know, the realities of whatever exists. See, you brought me into a dimension that, I, man, I'm blown away being a car guy and a tech guy and then knowing what industry does. Mm -hmm. So you're the 40-year overnight success then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. It took a long time to get here, you know, and being the first black car manufacturer in 100 years, People really don't understand what it takes to manufacture a car. They really don't understand what goes into it. And it is, you know, there's that the process that you have of being an inventor, you know, engineer, businessman, and so on and so forth. So we wear a lot of hats. And, you know, when you're doing things like that, like you said, it takes a lot of time. My dad always said either you have the money or you have the time. 
And while you have the time, you do what you got to do to make sure that when you get the money to make these things happen, because once you get the money, you're not going to have the time anymore. Everything's going to be, all this pressure is going to be on right. you, and you're not going to be able to make sure that you've done the things that are required. So we've been at this for a very long time. This is not an overnight success. This isn't something that, you know, we just woke up yesterday and decided, oh, well, you know, we're going to make a car company or something like that. This, this is, is really neat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, well, you know, everybody's into electric vehicles now. We're going to get into this. No, that's not what we do. You know, this is a something Thing that was a part of us because my dad, you know, my favorite car was a 1969 Dodge Charger 426 Hemi four on the floor. Woo! You know, that thing just roared, you know what I mean? And as, yeah. as a kid, we sat in the back seat. We didn't have seat belts back then, you know what I mean? The seat belts still had the rubber band on it and whatnot. And we used to look out the back window and our dad would hit it and, you know, you see all the smoke flying everywhere and everything. And it's like, and I asked my dad, I said, Dad, where, where's the smoke go? He says, it goes in the air. I'm like, well, don't we breathe the air? And he's like, yeah, go ask your mother. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that you sit back and, you know, you think about it. And right. My whole idea was to make a car that was as much fun to drive as that 426 Hemi 1969 Dodge Charger RT without polluting the air, without making you know, it's difficult for us to breathe, yeah. you know, so when we get into those situations and we look at those things, we're looking to work with other manufacturers and so on and so forth. We're not, you know, looking to take over everything or take over the world by ourselves. We're a small company. We're going to move forward and we're going to make the biggest impact that we can by helping as many people as we can. A lady asked me years ago when I was here in, in Las Vegas, I've been in Vegas now for 19 years. And a lady asked me, she says, why don't you make cars with uh, uh, robots? I said, well, ma'am, how many cars do you know that are driven by robots? How many cars do you know that are purchased by robots? People buy cars. And if people don't have a job, they can't buy a car. So at the end of the day, if we give people a job, they have an opportunity to buy our product. It's just like Henry Ford said. I build my vehicles and I price them at a price point that my employees can buy them and I build my own customer base. So that's what we do. So wherever we go throughout the entire United States or around the world or whatever we go, we build our cars in such a fashion that not only can people put them together, you know, simply by hand tools or whatever is necessary, but they have have an opportunity to gain a job and go to work, have a sense of pride and be able to buy our vehicles and have that pride that I built that car. So when you think about it, you know, remember we used to say, oh, man, that car was built on a Wednesday, you know, because it kind of got to the middle of the, to the middle of the week. Everybody's happy. You know what I mean? They, they're working on the car and they got pride in it by that time because now the weekend's over with. They finally got back into it. We want to make it so that people who work for the company have that pride. So every time they walk into the door, they have their game face on. They're trying to do the best they can to make the best product they're going to make because they don't know if they're going to get that particular car or not. So, you know, we want to make sure that everybody gets the best that we can possibly make. And that's what we're about. Well, the best you can possibly make, you know, and I'm very interested in going back to some of the things you said, you know, as a musician, as someone interested in the arts and also just the the science of being a human being. You know, it's very interesting to me, as you said, tones were important, frequencies, right? The mm -hmm. feeling that you get after you step out of that car, right? And as, as we were talking, mm -hmm. we expressed how we walk through a building, we walk through a mall, or we sit in a car we're not used to. Sometimes you get out or you, you finish that activity and you don't know why you feel this certain way, right? Mm -hmm. And again, I'm amazed in regard to that. Again, the first black American in 100 years to create a vehicle. Hey, I, I got to shake your hand on camera for that, Eric. Thank you, bro. You know? Thank you. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Very difficult situation. But when my, you know, as the saying goes, when you do what you love, is you know, for work a day in your life. So this is something that since I was a kid, is you know, there's never been anything else that I wanted to do. Nothing else that I wanted to be, except for a car manufacturer. So you know, and it's it's a weird thing for a child to say, you know. But I always wanted to see my father's name on the back of a car. The car, the company's not named after me. It's named after my father. You know. So and my my dad. Matthew Mims is uh, he was my hero. He was my my inspiration, you know. So when I and I look at it, you know, everything that I do and trying to get these things done is, you know, to make sure that I honor that man, 
you know, honor him, honor my mom and dad, because they raised me to be an honorable person. You know, so when I look at things and I look at our communities, I look at how we do things, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's been a lot of things, a lot of times I could have sold out, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and it's just like, okay, when you look at the situation, it's like, okay, how many people have sold out before I, I was here? How many times has this situation happened? How many times did a person have an opportunity to make a change, to make a difference, and they took the paycheck and they just walked away from everything and now we get to stand back and think oh only thing we can do is be basketball players or football players or musicians or singers or rappers or dancers or whatever you know mm-hmm. we've got a lot of very and very intelligent people in this world that have this mindset that we can't do anything extra we can't do something different because oh that's a nerdy thing to do you know i want to be cool i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna i'm gonna mm-hmm. sing i'm gonna rap or i can you know put these words together there's nothing wrong with that you know what i mean i enjoy i enjoy music i enjoy dancing i enjoy playing basketball football those those are fun things to do but at some point in time we have to stand up and show these kids somebody that looks like them that has a mind that put it together and didn't take the sellout didn't walk away from everything stood up and made it happen to show them that it's possible because when I was a kid growing up, I thought we would have been flying around and going to different planets and yeah. doing all kinds of stuff and the Jetsons and the, you know, Lost in Space and Star Trek and Star Wars and everything else. I thought all that stuff was going to be done by now. No, it didn't happen. You know, and why? Because we've been so, you know, told that that's not important or that's impossible. You know, people tell me all the time, well, you know, all oh, this is the way to, what you're doing is impossible. No, it is possible. Our system is superconductive at room temperature. Exactly. You know what I mean? We use salt water as an electrolyte. It's, what is one of the most important, you know, things that we need is water. But what is the most abundant thing that we have? Salt water. So we utilize that system, and our system desalinates the salt water, and you got clean drinking water. You know, what, what, what's wrong with that? You know, so when we when you get to the end of it, you know, we have to do something different. We got to do something that's going to save the planet. You know, we're caretakers of this world and we have to act in harmony with what God put us in place to do. You know, so as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I'm doing the best that I can, you know, to honor not only my father, my mother, but, you know, our creator. You know, so we do what we got to do. Yeah. Thank you, Eric, for sharing with us again. Thank tell us again, much. it's it's Mims Motors, and we can look forward to driving one of these. Tell me a couple of your your models. Let me dream about the sedan. Let me dream about this sports car a little, yeah, man. Yeah, Give me some yeah. of that cool <laughs> stuff, man. Come on, I'm, I'm feeling it, dude. What is the sounds? What is yeah, the grooves? Yeah, yeah. We got a we've got 27 different vehicles we're coming out. We've got the E line, uh, that's our economy line vehicles, but they're not really economy. You know, it's just just the name. Uh, but our premium vehicles. Are going to be coming out. You can look it on our website, uh, www.mimsmotorsusa.com, M I M S Motors. USA.com, and uh, you'll see like the Sage uh, that was actually named after a young lady that I, uh, a little girl I met in the uh, airport, you know, and her name was Sage, and she was just a beautiful young child, and she had that that energy, you know what I mean? And she was so interested in what we're doing. Uh, we've got the Spider, which is a uh, convertible. Uh, you'll love that one. Uh, you, you know, let your hair blow. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, you know, the big fellow behind the camera there, mm-hmm. he'll, he'll love the Juggernaut and the Jaeger. Uh, oh, yeah. Those are very large vehicles. You know, it can go just about anywhere. Where uh, one of my favorite vehicles is a, a, a truck we call the craw- Crawler. Uh, it's uh, internally known as the uh, Crawler Colt 45 Edition, and that one is uh, going to be the first trophy truck that you can buy from the factory at the dealership, drive it off the lot, go do the Baja 1000, and then drive back home. So that one's going to be really cool. What are you uh, doing to me here? <laughs> <laughs> Give me your life. You know, what are you I, doing I, to me yeah, here? I'm trying to what take all of your money, money bro. <laughs> Oh, you just said Baja 1000, man. That was the kid building Baja. Yeah, school, yeah, you know? for real, dude. Okay, so we, we've got the truck, and and what's next, man? Yeah, we got some really cool stuff. we got a hypercar coming out called the Sabre, and uh, that's 1,883 horsepower, all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, active 
Arrow, yeah. Active Down Force. Uh, we got some really cool stuff that we're going to be coming out with, man. So, you know, we're we're trying to get into the things that we wanted to do as a kid, you know what I mean, and just yeah. do things that uh, – and, and the reason why we have the company set up where it's like the premium line and the e, uh, economy line mm -hmm. is that when we want, want people to come in and start out with like an E2 or something like that and then – graduate and go up and you know and go into the premium vehicles it's at the same dealership it's the same opportunity you get to see you know sometimes you have to go to a, a different place to look at the exotics you know what i mean we want a saber and a sage and a you know a juggernaut sitting on the same lot so when a person walks in they can look at it and say man oh you know what i can afford this and I, when i come back i'll trade that one in and i'll get this and i'll come back and i'll get that we want people to stick with us, you know what I mean? Because we want them to experience the quality. We want them to experience the vehicles. We want them to experience the technology that you can't get anywhere else. You know, with the universe network system in our vehicles, you know, you've got, you know, a Wi-Fi system. It's free Wi-Fi, free telephone service, the whole nine yards. You know what I mean? So it's nothing that you have to go anywhere else for. And that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to give you a different experience, you know, something that the company actually cares about you because we do right so google it man mims motors clandestine live we're here at res 2020 making some things happen man i'm proud to have met you i can't wait to get this car man i'm already dreaming of trucks and spiders man <laughs> thank you, you go, brother. man mims motors clandestine live